Welcome to the Author Road Again podcast. I'm Chris. I'm Ross. And I'm Nathan. And this is our podcast about anything and everything off road. We literally have been all over the place lately, which is kind of fun. This is more right in our wheelhouse, so this is perfect. Oh um, yeah. As always, we're we're socially distanced. It's the only way we can do the show. We used to not say we were socially distanced. We just did the show, but then like social work. distancing became a thing. Um, but I'm still in the Midwest, Ross is in the Northeast, and Nathan's in Idaho. In Idaho, that's right. Whew. Idaho Falls. <laughs> Idaho <laughs> Falls. Two Google the, Maps I go. Are the Chuckers still there? The Chuckers, yeah. How do you know about the Chuckers? So I don't I don't know if they still are, but the Idaho Falls Chuckers used to be a minor league affiliate of the Kansas City Royals. And so yeah, that's there right. have been a number of times I've heard about players down in Idaho Falls, but it was, I mean, like down on the farm system, the minor leagues, you guys, for me, yeah. up, you're north. Um, but yeah, and it was, now that's going back a ways. I don't, <laughs> I don't even know if they're still affiliated, but yeah, I was like, we have a team in Idaho? I kind of think they are affiliated, but yeah, it's a, it's a great little team and They play a lot of games throughout the summer. We actually go a fair amount, not a ton, but a fair amount. That's pretty awesome. Yeah, I was looking it up real fast to see who they're partnered with. (laughs) Because that's the one thing about um, minor leagues team is they can change affiliations, Mm -hmm. which means all of the players disappear and then new players come in. Yeah, it used to be with the Padres, uh, at least when I was younger, I don't Yeah, I think it's the Kansas City Royals, but I don't know. To be honest, I don't follow it that closely. I'm trying to find it so uh, fast. I'm good at Googling it. The only (laughs) non-professional league team around here that matters is the Danbury Thrashers, which was a hockey team that I I think they existed explicitly for the purpose of getting into fights. Like there was very little actual hockey being played. (laughs) Yeah, I, feel, I feel sad now because they stopped in 2020. Oh, in 2020. Oh, well, they went they went independent in 2021. They are not um, affiliated with anybody. So with anybody, anybody. Yeah. yeah. But the guys that want to play pro but haven't quite gotten there were are on their way out. But yeah, Roy Royals yeah. from 2004 to 20, Padres from 95 to 03, <clears throat> Braves That's from 86 right. to 94. See, like they change affiliations. Wow. It's so weird. Oh, yeah, they're uh, crazy. Around. Once you get down to the lower, the this is the first time levels. we've talked about baseball on this. Talking show. about baseball <laughs> and hockey. Yeah, yeah. Give me a little bit of time. I'll drag in some Chiefs references here. <laughs> Actually, oh, the only time on the show we've ever talked about football went absolutely horrible for me. Oh, really? Because it well, was the show. About football then. Yeah. Well, it was the show right before the last Super Bowl with the Chiefs and Tampa oh, yeah. Bay. <laughs> and I was so confident. And the uh, guest, I, I don't remember who the guest was, but he was like, Mm-mm, Tampa Bay's got you, and they got us. So, yeah. Now, I don't know if that's a personal superstition or not, but I'm not, I'm not going to talk about it anymore. That's, so. uh, that's why we don't talk about F1 because it's, uh, it's a sore subject these days. It's over. There you go. <laughs> it is, it's, yeah, it's, it's over, not for the better this season. Yeah, I don't know what's going to happen there. God. Hey, it's only like two and a half months away. Yeah. It, it was 100 days when they ended. Yeah. So. The season's so long. Anyway. Mick Schumacher now to Mercedes. And here we are, off-road show, talking about professional, you know, tarmac racing. It wouldn't be the first time. Right. Crazy. Crazy. So, uh, yeah, so I don't have any real personal updates on my side. Um, I, I I don't know if we talked about this. We we went to um, we went to Newport, Rhode Island. We took a Kia Carnival. It was <laughs> pretty spectacular. It, I, it's just a good van i mean you know the one we had was like almost 50 grand but um it 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 made the amount of stuff that we bring for me my wife and our six-month-old um comically (laughs) small in comparison to how much space there actually is yeah um and yeah it's got those crazy like second row jet pie you know uh, the private jet seats that recline yeah the way but well, good car good car for, um, first of all stance wise <clears throat> way better than standard minivans like it yeah she's got a little more ground clearance it's not a yeah, ton the the designers the design brief was basically make it look not like a minivan and it is successful um also that crazy like c-pillar blade this is thing. like <laughs> it's the first time that a blade like that has been successful since the first gen audi r8 yeah but 
good car a uh, really good car i mean you know there's like some downsides like we only averaged 23 miles per gallon <laughs> and most of the trip was highway which isn't great considering it's front wheel drive and you know a v6 and is there an all-wheel all drive option there's, there's not, not. There's yeah not. that's that's and the downside here that's front the only drive, other only other downside same v6 as the telluride right it's basically this, it's it's basically a minivan to tell you ride. Like the interfaces are the same, it drives basically the same. You just sit a little lower and it's got a little wider on its haunches. But good, really good car. Um, Sam looks so comfortable. Yeah, it, dude, and it made getting the car seat in and out so easy compared yeah. to like even the Lexus. You know, it, so there are reasons that minivans <clears throat> exist. <laughs> yeah, we were really, 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 really spoiled. You know, just with like 2.25 people's worth of crap it was like oh yep 2.25 oh, yeah <laughs> um but yeah other than that the only other update is uh after much deliberation it more likely than not we're going to keep the lexus yay um, yeah Thank nathan God. so you know good I have choice a, i have, I agree a, I have a choice. gx 460 um i've had three forerunners four forerunners uh, I thought I, you I, were five forerunners. I was I, I met too many forerunners. So I thought you I am, had as many forerunners as fifth gens. God, I don't even know. Um, <laughs> but yeah, so I've had this GX since last November, and obviously, you know, um, a lot of partners on board with this build so far: uh, Iron Man and Life Force and Toyo and Motegi, Wheel Pros and and Warren um, and Midland. So I, I think the Lexus is going to stay. Um, I hope so. It's not perfect, you know, like <laughs> it it's the the gas mileage is dog shit, but like realistically the only place I would go from here is like a Tundra with a 57 or a late 100 or very early 200 series Land Cruiser, so which the gas out. mileage is worse. <laughs> What'd you say? Sequoia. Yes, or Sequoia, yeah. Which <laughs> it's right gas, in between all of those. Gas mileage is worse. Yeah. None of them are really better for the trails around here because they're all bigger and the trails around here tend to be tight for even a forerunner. So I think the Lexus is gonna stay. I I wish it wasn't black. That's like my only <laughs> Wrap it. My, I, you know how much wrapping yeah, that's car is now? Do. Dude, wrap, <laughs> to do a, a good wrap around here is 3500 bucks for oh, like, yeah. the lowest of the That low seems quality. very reasonable. I don't I don't know what the issue is. Yeah, because 3500 bucks could do so much other stuff for this trip. That's true. That's true. <laughs> so that's, that's it. You but know, if it um, also alleviates you from being angry about what color it is, then it's actually increasing your mental well-being. It's not Money well anger. Spent about what color it is it's more just like i know there are swell swirl marks all over it because i don't know the first thing about detailing and uh and you know like trail rash doesn't exactly look great on a black vehicle so yeah i don't know whatever it is what it is i might just feel like you've got options trd accents or something but yeah the next step um conveniently for this episode is probably uh sliders and skids so nathan's head snapped immediately yeah yes. yeah yeah Good one. I, and i got questions so yes, <laughs> nice. that, that's all uh all the stuff on my side and and chris what's that anything i remembered my tropical update. jungle of a uh of a place you're living in this screen right now <laughs> yeah well you can see that obviously my background does not match the background of this photo i remembered my update my oldest is old enough to drive and we have started driving lessons with him um nice. and uh, yeah I what is to... the permit age and licensing age out there so he gets an instructional permit at 14 so he's had it actually since what july the actual fuck yeah hey farm towns agriculture farm towns yeah yeah that's so, and I to be honest is too. yeah and, and so because just, because of ag, yeah, they need and to be honest like farm kids have been popping clutches since they were eight like let's get, <laughs> let's be honest here like yeah. they're doing it on the property like my first driving experience was on my grandfather's acreage in a minivan and they basically said don't hit anything and i was like mm -hmm. cool and they were like you remember <laughs> what's the closest daughter? thing i can hit <laughs> yeah. well the nice thing is like he's got wide fields <laughs> and then they were like keep it under 25 mm -hmm. just in case you hit a rut or something like mm -hmm. um but what the the point I guess I took away from it is so much of my youth 
was spent paying attention to what my parents were doing in the driver's seat mm -hmm. because I didn't have anything else to do in the car. I just sat there and on road trips, that. and eventually you read books and the inventions of laptops and things like that. You could maybe watch movies. Um, we weren't fancy and didn't have the TV VCR setups in the back. So, right. um, no, we didn't but either. like as a kid, I watched everything my dad did while he was driving a manual transmission car or everything my mom did when she was moving the van. Like you're paying attention to that. All of my kids have devices. They all stare at the device. There's a you have Wi-Fi in your fucking drive. Yeah, there's Wi-Fi <laughs> in a DVD player in the suburban. So like <laughs> that, not a single person is paying attention to what I do. Right. Um, or they don't their even mom care to do this. No, yeah, they don't have a clue. Yeah. They're like, we're they're, back they're here. Learning Leave us alone. More about <laughs> driving from YouTube than they are from sitting in the car with you. Exactly. The kid in the back's playing Forza while I'm doing this up front. Like he didn't care. Yeah. Like, it kind of sounds awesome though. Yeah. Well, for them. Right. Um, <laughs> the best the, the best part was driving to Montana like two summers ago where we went out of cell coverage and even the truck didn't have a Wi-Fi signal and watching their faces implode of like, what do we do now? I was like, you literally have four DVD players. Pivot. Mm -hmm. Stop complaining. Yeah, watch Just something. pivot. Yeah. Oh my God, look outside. Imagine yeah, well, that's the horror. The, the number of times that ha I have called out things outside the vehicle to make sure they see something like my parents Cows. didn't do that because I was looking out already. I'd be like, hey, dad, did you see the moose? And he was like, there was a moose? Like, because yeah. we were doing that. We looked outside the anyway. Cows. So. You, you, I mean, it's it's a road trip rule. Like, you have to announce every time you see cows. <laughs> Not out here you don't because that's literally every five minutes. I, like, <laughs> I guess it is a territorial <laughs> road trip rule. I think so. <laughs> Ross, I got a game for you to play. Yeah. Yeah. Right. It's called Hey Cow. <laughs> right. <laughs> and no. you want to go first because you walk up to the field and yell, Hey Cow. And then you count how many of them there turn their heads. And it only mm. really works great for the first person. And after that, there's yeah. always a dimension. Yeah, no, that's turn, better so. than cow tipping, which is yeah. as far as it gets around here. Which that was last night, actually. We, my oldest had a wrestling tournament, and the, another kid was out there, and someone was like, that kid's been tipping a lot of cows. Because the, the way he put a shoulder into a kid and drove him to the ground quickly, you were like, someone's been training it's on horrible. something other than people. Like, horrible. <laughs> Don't tip cows. We do not endorse cow tipping. It is not nice to the cows. It's not a real thing. That's what we tell city kids. In Pennsylvania, it is. In Pennsylvania, it is. I promise you. Anyway, so... I spent about 45 minutes to an hour with him behind the wheel of the now behind the wheel of the suburban. So like, we're not being nice. We're not giving him a reasonably sized vehicle. We're like, if you can drive the suburban, you can drive anything. So I mean, the smallest vehicle in your household is a second gen Sequoia, which is right. Which is it's 210 shorter. inches long. Yeah. It's shorter. It's not 200 shorter. inches yeah. long. <laughs> yeah. Fair. I mean, I, yeah. So he he definitely has some some things to work on. We we start talking about being smooth. Uh, and I was texting my wife. I was like, I am I'm physically nauseous right now. Like I, I yeah, I might find yeah. because it's the jerky. I'm like, oh mm. buddy, it's just a smooth. Like let's go. Mm. Man. <laughs> like so, that that was very all the things for the EPS thing. Yeah, I I have some uh, some things that I'm going to do differently the next time he's in the vehicle. So. Uh, maybe, maybe prepping him a little more ahead of time, trying to <laughs> help him out. But I didn't know, I didn't know his frame of reference. Like I didn't, mm -hmm. didn't know that yeah. he did not know how to do anything. I told Assume him to, the least. I told him to turn right. And he was like, I was like, turn your turn signal to the right. And he's like, so down or up. I'm like, oh my God, you literally have, you're a blank slate. Like you literally know nothing about driving. <laughs> yeah. You can either corrupt or endorse success as needed you know yeah like you got a lot of ways to go here which the next kid is like he's already ripping gators around and stuff in the neighborhood and on farms yeah. and so like oh i, I remember that yeah, yeah i don't want to put him behind the wheel of anything yet because he's yeah. he's ready to go so anyway yep. that's my update <laughs> let's talk let's talk cbi yeah yeah so yeah, you're way more interesting yeah. than our stuff nathan <laughs> <laughs> real talk yeah so all right so give us your um the way we like to kick things off with guests is like, give us your, you know, your elevator pitch, like your, your, your quick spiel about you and CBI, how everything came to be, um, what you guys yeah. specialize in and whatnot. Yeah. Well, um, CBI off-road, I mean, we're a manufacturer, so we manufacture body armor primarily for vehicles, front and rear bumpers, roof racks, rock sliders, skids, you know, on some accessory brackets. 
Um, cool thing about CBI Off Road is uh, we're located here in Idaho Falls, Idaho, like I mentioned. Um, we manufacture everything 100% in house, which I think is a pretty cool thing, um, that is especially cool. as a manufacturer goes to be able to say that, you know, top mm -hmm. to bottom, inside and out, everything happens mm -hmm. here at our facilities. Um, we are, yeah, we've been cool. around for quite a while now. Um, my dad and I, this is actually a family owned business. So okay. um, hmm. my dad and I own the, the company and we purchased the company actually from a gentleman here in Idaho Falls back in 2010 that we were working with. Um, oh, wow. Back in that day, um, we've always been motorheads and, you know, into cars, trucks, whatever it is, power sports. Um, back in that day when the Yamaha Rhino came out, actually. Ooh. Yeah, we were customizing Yamaha Rhinos. So we 450s were 450s having... and 660s. Yep. Yeah. So we had these these Yamaha Rhinos that we were putting two bumpers on front and rear whole roll cages. We were enclosing the bed, um, locking the bed and putting a bench seat actually in the bed area. I remember that. So I'm uh, yeah, just like, you that. know, I'm in the truck world, but it, it, more so even in the ATV and UTV world. I, and I remember there being accessory second rows for the Rhino back yeah. when, like, before the Razor was even, like, taken off. Yeah, the Razor hadn't even come out yet. And, mm -hmm. and so we were, that's what we were doing. And at that time, my dad had another business and he, um, he was buying and selling um, specialty cars. So sports cars, hot rods you know, custom cars, all kinds of stuff. And, and even doing some restorations and that's on the side thing. was kind of this Yamaha Rhino project. And that's how we got involved, at least with um, the original owner of CBI. Um, we had always been, you know, into trucks, of course, and, and at least here in Idaho, um, diesel pickups are big. Um, because of the farming community and not and, surprising, uh, <laughs> right, right? All all these all these farmers and people like that, they get these diesel pickups and they're souping the crap out of them, you know, and doing a bunch of performance modifications and hasn't so changed. We were doing a, <laughs> yeah, we were doing a lot of that stuff. And um, anyways, we ended up purchasing the company from from that gentleman, and it was a it was a small company. I mean, basically, when we purchased the company, there was the original owner who was, um, you know, he was the expert when it came to manufacturing and welding and all of that. And I became good. My job was to do everything else besides <laughs> manufacturing. Mm -hmm. So I did all the sales. <laughs> I did um, all the running around, parts grabbing, all of that. I did oh, our wow. accounting. Yeah you know, website. And we had some people that we would work with some, with some of this other stuff, but that really was kind of the, the major beginning for CBI. And, and really when we, we started growing and, and developing our product line and, um, you know, just working on our, our mm -hmm. products and, and what we were wanting to put out. So how many employees are you now? So we are at around 80 employees right Holy now. Holy shit. <laughs> yeah. So I yeah. thought you were going to say eight. <laughs> no, we've gone from, you know, in 2010, it was, it was, you know, just two of us to, to around 80 right now. And, um, we're, we're a much different operation, you know, back in the day, we didn't cut our own parts, for example, you know, they were actually, when we first started, they were plasma cut, they weren't even laser cut. Um, and we weren't doing our own bending. We weren't doing our own powder coating. You know, we were designing and developing the product, but, you know, other than assembly and packaging and things like that, you know, everything else was outsourced. Hmm. Um, today, it's totally different. You know, like I, I mentioned to begin with, 100% of the process is done in-house. So not only design and development, 100% of our manufacturing, we laser cut our own parts, we bend our own parts, we machine our own parts. Um, we even powder coat our own parts. Um, oh, so everything's the, the... packaged and shipped right of out of our out of our own facilities. You know, it's it's literally all done right here. So it's like start to finish. You have you have start the equipment to, to do. Wow. Okay. Yeah. That's uh, that's impressive. I mean, you know, more times than not, we hear about you know pieces being delivered and assembled or 
right you know uh showing up and getting a, a like a, an etching on them and and that's how they right. say that they've made them in house um that's crazy I, I i didn't realize that chris i don't know if you had any concept of that but i just know i like their stuff and i was like let's go yeah. talk to those guys dude same <laughs> same so i mean going back you know like 10 years i mean in in the off-road community you know people tend to skip over the appropriate armor more times than not than they should um and yep. and i think even in the jeep community you know if you want if you want skids or rock sliders it's like you know it's worn or not worn uh arb aev and like another quadratech you know um right so uh, a couple of questions that kind of stem from that i mean what what really like kicked off the craze for the cbi parts and also what percentage of your sales go to Toyotas these days? <laughs> yeah. So that was, I mean, you know, as far as the craze goes, when CBI was originally started, that was the focus was Toyota products and um, primarily front and rear bumpers. Um, mm -hmm. And even on the rear bumper side, that was, was a major component that we were really known for was a rear bumper with the swing arm set up. Yep. Yep. And that ability to carry extra, you know, gear, whether it's your spare and fuel or water or, you know, a high lift jack, you know, those were mm -hmm. popular back in the day. Yeah. Everybody had to have their high lift jack on their vehicle. Um, that was really the start. And, and we've remained really true to the Toyota market. You know, it's, it's really our, our bread and butter and has been since day one. And we continue to develop products, um, specifically for all the Toyota makes and models, you know, that people are using from an off-road perspective. Um, I mean, we've, we've branched out over the years. So like that last picture that Chris was just showing, um, was showing the back end of our ZR2 Colorado. Exactly. Yeah. Here I am yeah. hunting for Tacoma, I, I yeah, I, Colorado. I was buying a bike today actually with a whole bunch of shit on it. And I was like, oh, those are really cool. <laughs> It's, you know, and, and what's crazy is we started, so that was 2018 when we got our first ZR2 Colorado. And, um, just prior to that, we had started branching out a little bit. We made a few Jeep products. Um, we make a few products currently for Ford Rangers and F-150s. We do the, mm -hmm. the Chevy Colorado, um, we do some Subarus and, you know, some of the Lexus models and things like that, yeah. but yeah. It's still a pretty large percentage of our sales are strictly Toyota. You know, mm -hmm. that's a that's our core group of customers, and they've been the guys that have been with us from day one. And you know, building out their their third gen forerunners, their fourth gen forerunners, yep. their fifth gen forerunners. You Dude, know, so I remember in probably 2017, maybe 2016. I mean, the, one of the biggest problems with the fifth gen forerunner is that you can't fit. A, a large oversized spare in the spare yeah. compartment and obviously i mean the same thing with the lexus you know the gx because it's yeah. the same thing as a fifth gen forerunner um and everybody's panicking looking for a place to carry a spare and yeah. there were at that time i think maybe three different options for spare carrying and rear armor and and one of them was like a you know a, a hitch mounted swing out which i don't know if you've ever had experience with them but i have uh, actually they're they're <laughs> a good cheap solution but they're better at like bouncing around and wobbling all over the place than they are anything else um the second is you know throw it in the cargo area or on the roof and the third was a cbi product and it was yep. like on the 400 forum it just it, it man it was like people lining up to get them at the time um so it, it's really crazy how you know it's like wildfire in the off-road world you know that we've seen the same thing with max tracks you yeah know? so yeah. Uh, how did uh how did the 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 like tornado of things go from you know the world and of off-road community picking up on things to suddenly like sema builds it's just, you know, it was just a kind of a gradual evolution. Um, you know, our, our products have always been very popular within the industry and, and as our brand recognition and, 
and that has grown. It's just led to other opportunities and, and, you know, all of those projects, whether it's working with Lexus, we've been doing a lot with Lexus um, the last few years, done several builds for them and, and also for Toyota and, and then some other bigger names in the industry. You know, it's just kind of like everything, you know, it's collaborations, networking and connecting. And, and, you know, when people like your product, they reach out and they want to, they, they bring these projects to us really, you know, mm -hmm. you know, all the projects that we've done with Lexus and Toyota have, have just naturally occurred that way. They've, they've come through someone at Toyota or Lexus that's seen our products and, you know, talk to us at a show or whatever. And, and all of a sudden they bring us a new project and it's pretty mm -hmm. awesome to be part of those projects. It, it gives us a, uh, an opportunity to see some of the new and upcoming, you know, vehicles or, or at least the direction that some of these manufacturers are going. And it gives us some opportunity to uh, be a little creative sometimes too, you know, and, and do something a little bit outside of the box and see how people react to it. You know, just like you're showing this mm -hmm. trail hunter concept here. And, um, you know, it's always good and fun to be a part of that stuff, whether people like it or not, because you always get, right. you know, mixed, yeah. mixed mm -hmm. uh, opinions. Mm -hmm. And I think that trail hunter is a perfect example of it. You know, there's a lot of people that just really did not like it. You know, they're sometimes <laughs> I think people get upset with with the conservative nature of Toyota. You yep. know, they're just they're fairly conservative in their approach and. You know, there's benefits mm -hmm. from that perspective. Um, right, but I that's think why shit works for so long. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's, <laughs> exactly. it's durable. It lasts, yeah. you know. And and then there's the rest of us that sometimes are like, man, just put a a twin turbo V8, you know, super right. high horsepower, right. you know, whatever <laughs> yeah. in there. Why doesn't there. Why doesn't the the Tundra have the five liter V8? You know that Lexus puts in all their fun stuff. Right. Like, right. Yeah. It's crazy. So, it just kind of evolves that way. And, you know, we're just grateful for the opportunity we get mm -hmm. to be a part of those awesome projects. So you've worked with Toyota and correct me if I'm wrong. You've worked with uh, the Expedition Overland team as well. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We've actually worked with, you know, uh, we were joking about this actually the other day in the office when, um, when Clay and Rochelle started Expedition Overland, their first year, they contacted us and they wanted us to help oh. with with one of their builds. And uh, just in my stupid thought process, I just didn't think we could do it. You know, <laughs> I just felt like, ah, it's just, you know, we don't have the time to do it within their time frame. And I just don't think it's going to work. So I told them no the first year. <laughs> oh, and uh, we kind of kick ourselves for that because they've done some great things awesome thing since they got yeah. started um XO but we joined them for the second year and we've been with them ever since and yeah. and that's been a pretty awesome opportunity as well you know those guys are are i think kind of leaders in the space as far as mm -hmm. different types of overland travel and, and helping people understand overland travel and and what it's all about and how each of us can participate in it yep. and um it's been fun to be part of their builds and and to work with them and then provide feedback and input for us. And, you know, it's just been a great relationship. You have to parlay your way into like tagging along on a trip. Just be like, yeah, I'm coming along for product testing well, or something. <laughs> I keep mentioning, I'm like, you know, you guys keep going on all these awesome trips and I'm just waiting for my invite. You know, it's kind right. of a yearly thing. Right. I just drop a little hint. And, you know, hopefully one of these years you'll see somebody from the CBI crew on their trip with them. <laughs> yeah. Well, we've, we've had uh, Clay and Rochelle on the show and, and Kurt Williams as well. And, and Kurt yeah. should be coming back soon. And man, it's Good. like the trips they go on and, you know, the way they put vehicles together is just, it's on a different plane from, you know, like anybody else. Well, they're, uh, yeah. they're, brand specific but they never stay with the same one like it's a forerunner it's a hundred series it's a tacoma mm -hmm. it's yeah but when you're ram prospector like back like by the brand you know the company the way they it are helps. like yeah. it helps it helps but they're you <laughs> it's know. a difference yeah. yeah but they they i mean they got there by having that loyalty going into it you know they weren't yeah. running like i don't know fucking like X Terra's or something, and so right. they are building, you know, Sequoias for Toyota, um, right? But yeah, so all right, so let's let's talk um let's talk armor. 
So obviously, <laughs> okay. CBI is you know predominantly known for, as you said, front and rear bumpers and skid plates and sliders and whatnot. Um, one of the things I want to touch on here is the different materials that are used for the actual armor itself. So, I mean, we were talking about Yamaha rhinos before. Um, mm-hmm. In the UTV world, it's gone from steel skid plates to aluminum skid plates to a lot of guys are running um, ultra high UHMWP skid plates because they're light, yeah. they're cheap, and you can basically use them as like like an underbody slider. You know, like you put a vehicle on a rock and and you can basically just like use the skid to move over it as opposed to just protect the underbody you're describing my old jeeping days yes (laughs) i mean shit your fucking tj is more akin to you know the 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 side by side same size yeah Yeah. Yeah. same size and same price you know um are you are you seeing any of the kind same kind of like material developments and changes in the armor community or people just asking for like give me steel i'll take the weight you know hits and and that's it yeah yeah no i think definitely you know the the off-road um overland segment side of the this industry has seen that um we've seen it just throughout our existence you know in the beginning all our skid plates were still you know and even some of the the shapes that we put into our skid plates the way we reinforce them um, and, and different methods of manufacturing has changed, uh, to hit certain needs. So, you know, for example, most overland travelers like myself, I mean, I'm not out rock crawling and and hitting super extreme stuff. An aluminum skid plate is a really awesome option. A, like you mentioned, they're super strong still. If you build them right, they, they definitely hold up. Um, you save a ton of weight. It's it's dang near fifty percent um, less in weight than what it's a that steel, much. Yeah, and what Holy than what shit. a steel equivalent is. So, wow. for example, if okay. you look at like our Tacoma skid plates, a full set of skid plates is going to be around one hundred and thirty five pounds. Um, the aluminum ones, you're going to be in that seventy ish range. Mm-hmm. You know, depending on which that's forerunner Tacoma. So yeah, that, it's a big difference. That's a big difference. I mean, huge difference on the weight side of things. And um, especially with Tacoma owners constantly oh. and unknowingly getting to the gross vehicle weight without oh, even yeah. considering it, you know, like that is the like trope of tropes in the Tacoma world. Yeah. And we've done the same thing, even on the bumper side of things, because the way we can manufacture these parts in aluminum there's, there's really no reason to do still, you know, in a lot of scenarios, there really isn't. Mm-hmm. Um, we've had, I can think of a certain situation that I had in, in one of our Tacomas, we were down in Moab actually doing some trails down there and, and you know how it is with, with more rock crawling type, uh, off-roading. There's a lot of scenarios where you are scraping over things, you know, just like you would on a rock slider, you're getting high centered on a skid plate, things mm-hmm. like that. And, and I remember the scenario where, I mean, I just got myself high centered big time and had aluminum skid plates on and we just beat the tar out of them trying to get out of that. And those dang skid plates, I mean, it's, it honestly, we were so rough on them. It surprised the heck out of me, but they <laughs> held up and yeah. they did their job and they protected all the components that they needed to. Mm-hmm. And, you know. So we did that. No big deal. Made it through the trail and we're saving all the weight. We're saving wear and tear on the vehicles. Um, yep. To me, it's just a, it's a major positive all the way around when it comes to aluminum. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I tend to agree. Um, there's, you know, there's old school faithfuls for steel skids. I mean, the same, like we talk up and down about seal cable versus synthetic line, you know, on winches. And there's people who outright refuse to run synthetic. And I mean, at this point in my life, I won't run you. I, you have to pay me quite a bit of money to touch steel cable. (laughs) You know? (laughs) Yeah, Um, I agree. So yeah. Yeah. So it's interesting to hear that, that aluminum is, um, I mean, a, that much of a weight savings and, and B, maintaining the same durability i mean 
do you, do you generally do the aluminum skids in the same thickness as steel or are they a little thicker? They're thicker. So our steel skid plates are, are three sixteenths or seven gauge. Um, the aluminum ones are quarter inch. Okay. So that's, that's one of the differences that affects the strength on the mm -hmm. aluminum skid plates. The other thing really is by way of design. Um, and that's how we build them. So there is a uh, structural bracing, you know, where needed. Um, there's certain, like, if you look at that picture we're looking at right now on the Tacoma skids, um, the bends and the wings, how we engineered those in those actually add a significant amount of strength. So as you're really taking, you know, high impacts in that front portion of the skid, that impact zone, um, it's going to hold up by way mm -hmm. of design. And so combination of both of those things that really make the aluminum skid plate work and function the way that it needs to. Mm -hmm. are, are you generally proponents of like more one piece style skids or do you like to break them down to front, middle, rear? Or just like do, I mean, I've seen, you know, people running like front bumper to the like transmission area kind of stuff. Yeah. So typically our skids are broken down into three sections is typically how they're broken down. Um, it depends a little bit on the vehicle. There are some variances like this, this new Tundra from Toyota. Um, I don't know if you guys have seen this, but it's crazy the the frame mounting to where your bumper is and, and actually the front crush zone and everything, it's a mile away from where the skid plates start underneath. Really? I mean, it's like, there's this huge, huge gap. I mean, you could fit, you could fit people in there. <laughs> it's so big. Um, but anyways, you know, we, we just analyze the vehicle as far as what we're trying to protect from, from the bumper coming down to where the skid plate starts. And then part of the, the issue with breaking it up is in most cases it's necessary um, because of differences in elevation as you're running across the frame. And so we take advantage of those differences in elevation to create the seamless transition from one to the other. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and that's the ultimate goal, right? Is you want a very, a very well-protected underbelly of your vehicle. Um, you want to be able to slide over things. You want to protect, you know, those vital components underneath and it needs to be smooth from that transition from one to the other. And so there's oh. things that we do as far as we, you know, connect those and then types of hardware that we use. Um, we even have, uh, on the new Nissan Frontier, we have these little armor plates that go over the bolts to protect really? them. Uh huh. Because there's a few scenarios where we can't use a carriage bolt, for example, or we can't recess the the hardware into the skid plate. And so, Chris, that was good. <laughs> scenarios you have to do that. Interesting. Yeah. Um, is is that is the third gen? frontier skid any different from the second gen frontier skid <laughs> you know what that's a really dang good question i'll bet it's not um, <laughs> but we haven't we haven't developed any skid plates for the second gen in that we haven't tested them i Got do it. know there's some of the components um that are very similar you know as far as that goes but chances are it'll fit <laughs> yeah i mean it's a, effectively the same truck yeah yeah <laughs> I actually yep. really like the current Frontier. I put like almost 800 miles on one. It was, yeah, yeah, it's a good truck. I mean, it's uh, it's more comfortable than the than the Tacoma, which isn't saying yep. much. But no, I mean, I I pulled a trailer with it. I did some you know fire roads with it. It was a a decent thing. Um, well, and yeah, this Frontier with this bumper setup. Oh, and that skid, looks so looks good. So Oh, good. Yeah, it was so good. I, I really wonder. So the big thing with the second gen frontiers is the Titan swaps. So you you swap mm -hmm. like the the front suspension and the knuckles and the axles and diff and everything from the Titan. So it, it basically beefs it up. So you have you know heavy yeah. heavy ish duty fifteen hundred stuff under like a, a a small midsize truck platform. And if they did that on on this thing, man, that would be so sweet. Oh, I think it'd be awesome. And there, there are some guys actually that are doing it, but I've been impressed with this frontier. Actually, that truck in the picture is what I've been daily driving lately. And, and 
I I would agree with what you said. I mean, it's it's pretty impressive. I've I've enjoyed driving it. I mean, I don't have any complaints, honestly. Have have the upgrades made the steering even heavier? <laughs> it's like it's it has the heavy most, steering. The most Isn't that funny? You mentioned heavy the, the heavy steering, and I swear Dude. everybody that drives that vehicle, it's like the first thing that they say, like, man, man, this is I, like heavy like, steering going on here. <laughs> I try to not read reviews of vehicles that I know are coming through before I drive them, just so like I have a fresh you know, frame of reference or like mm. mindset going in. And I literally, I, I, when they dropped the frontier off, I had to move it from one parking spot to the other. And like, I got out and checked the tire pressure. It's like, there's something <laughs> yeah. wrong with this thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's great. It's, it's crazy, but no, they're, they're, they're good trucks. I wish the Titan was Dude, as good my, as the my only experience. It was going back to back to back to back to back, like 392 Wrangler, Nissan frontier, back into a Bronco, back into a Ford. Oh, really? Like, and so, like that was that, and the low resolution on the backup camera. Oh, it's horrible! The things oh, that wow. I noticed. It's so bad. Yeah, it's so bad. It's so, like the Toyota Rav Four. We have a Rav Four too, and it's worse than the Frontier. I mean, really? Like, what's the point of having a backup camera? You can't right. distinguish the curb from the garbage <laughs> can to whatever. That's funny. I mean, the backup camera on my truck is. It used to be good, but now with the spare tire on the rear door, we had to we had to extend the. The wires for the backup camera and the resolution is half as good as it used to be. <laughs> yeah, it goes down. You ruined it. So, okay, so uh, so you're you're daily in the frontier, but what what is in your actual own personal garage? We always like to kind of get a glimpse into what people, yeah, you know, so enjoy um, themselves. He said giant diesels. I heard that. <laughs> mm, yeah, farm trucks. Actually, yep. You know what? Yep. The only diesel we have right now is our ZR2 Colorado. That's oh, really the baby dirt, the baby max. Yeah, those things are awesome. Yeah. Yeah. This little no, guy. normally, so normally my truck is the Tacoma, the CBI Tacoma. The okay. Okay. So it's a 2019 TRD Pro in that voodoo blue. And oh, uh, that's a fun truck. I mean, I, I, I dig the truck. It's awesome. Yep, that one right there. Yep. Um, and my wife actually drives an Audi. She drives a Q7. Nice. Okay. She drives. Those so are good cars. Yeah, we like. I mean, I've I've always been an Audi, Volkswagen, Porsche fan, and so mm -hmm. you know, it kind of fits the bill, but yeah. works for the kids and the family. You know what I mean? But absolutely. Yeah. Well, absolutely. and you guys experience real winter, so yes, <laughs> we do. Yeah. Having some Quattro up there is a good thing. Yeah. Maybe. Oh, I love it. Q7s love are nice. It. The Q7s kind of fade into the background of the luxury SUV world recently with like with all the other absurdity that is happening, but the Q7 is just good. It's just constantly good. Well, and yeah, for a long time, like that was the best SUV consumer reports was like, just get a Q7. Oh, yeah. Don't. The really? first gen, yeah. the first gen like broke the luxury SUV world. Well, you have reset everybody. I, I have an aunt who went through multiple Q7s. <laughs> like, like uh, you know how Matt Farah has a story where like his mom had multiple Lexus RX oh, that she would like gift to yeah, people. My aunt was yeah. giving away Q7s to, to her <laughs> kids. And oh my heck. It's like because oh, they were still funny. good, but she was like, nope, I'm ready for the new yeah, one. Like, yeah. Oh man. Our first Q7 nice. was that that diesel, that TDI diesel. And that oh, thing was a beast. Was that I three, mean, I was love it? that diesel in it. It was a three liter TDI. Right? Three liter, yep, yeah. It's a three yeah. liter diesel. And that thing was so awesome. Mm -hmm. okay. And it it killed it. Fuel economy and everything. Power was really good. I mean, that Gosh. was an impressive vehicle. Rest in peace, motor. TDI. Oh man, <laughs> yeah. I, it's my happy right uh, generation. I know somebody that's TDI swapping an eighty series, and it is oh, like, that'd be cool. God, how that's the perfect guy. It's the right size. It's the right look. It's the right engine. Yep. You know, and it still it's sounds just, like a tractor. And still sounds yeah. like, and it probably mostly drives like a tractor, but. You know, when you're not fighting, you know, 30 year old electronics and uh, and Audi electronics, it's probably yeah. great. So. Yeah. Yeah. That sounds like a swap I don't want to deal with. <laughs> sounds <laughs> like a great a one, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. If I, it'd yeah. be a great engineering experiment, but I don't want to actually do that on my own. Like, right. No. <laughs> Hard. S3. Hard. No. <laughs> yeah. No. Yeah. So, all right. So you have any, uh, any exciting trips planned yourself or part of the CBI team trip? 
adventure log? You know, as far as trips go right now, I mean, we're, we're just hitting winter hard right now. You know, we've been getting a bunch of snow yeah. lately and, yeah. and at least in our area, um, there's very few roads that we can actually drive that are snow covered because we just get really? so much snow. Huh. Um, yeah, that, that picture right there, that one was actually last spring, believe it or not. <laughs> it was when we, we were spring. out on it that trail. It dead of winter. <laughs> yeah. We're actually going to try the next trip and it's going to happen in January is we're going to try to go do some, uh, some overnight camping out in the snow with the rooftop tents and stuff. And, um, we're going to try to do some, uh, skiing and snowboarding. Nice. Oh, nice. So that's the next one that we're looking forward to. Um, sounds cold. <laughs> yeah. It's, you know, it's going to be cold. I'm afraid it, it always is, but you know, it's usually not too bad as long as you bring the right gear. You know, it's manageable. Mm. That's my my yeah. favorite. Like, uh, God, what's I don't even know the comedian. If it's Billy Conley or something, he's an Englishman. He's like, there's no such thing as bad weather. It's just inappropriate clothing. Yeah, yeah. Yep. It's wrong. It's wrong attitude. Which yeah, I fully admit that. Like the not, the Nordic countries like still send their kids out for an hour and a half during the dead right. of winter. Like, yeah, just put more coats on them. Like, <laughs> right. I stopped oh, telling my the, kids they can't. You couldn't outside. get to work. It's too cold. I'm like, put a coat on, put a hat on, put gloves on, put your snowsuit on. Like, go. Like, just mm -hmm. go play. Mm -hmm. <laughs> That's how our kids are at recess here. It's funny, you know. They'll send every once in a while. They'll send a note home from school or a text, and they'll be like, "Oh yeah, it's gonna be negative whatever tomorrow." So we'll keep the kids in, but negative. every other day they're out <laughs> playing and freezing their butts off. <laughs> what do you plow your driveway with? <laughs> well my driveway is not that big so i use a snowblower nice okay but if it was a little bigger i'd probably use a an atv or a razor with a plow on it i shit you not i have had better experiences plowing a driveway with a snowblower than with an atv the atv yeah. always makes like a packed bottom layer that yeah gets becomes ice crushed. It, again it eventually turns into ice yes. It does. And then you're, you're right. going around with the chisel, smashing it into blocks so you can blast I have it. Have one out. of those. Yeah. Yep. Snowblower is <laughs> the way to go. That's why I prefer snowblower, honestly, myself, is for that yep. very reason. It doesn't pack anything down. I can get it, I can clean it right to the concrete, and then I'm not worrying about, you know, ice and stuff on my driveway. It is less fun, though. Yeah. Definitely less fun. I can tell you it's more fun than shoveling. So. Can confirm. <laughs> yeah, shoveling. You get, that's is... the problem around here. You get sick of shoveling. You know, right now it's fun because it's new, right? We haven't yeah, had snow it's only been a couple, three year. weeks. <laughs> right. you, you get the end of December and we're only a month and a half into winter. And it's like, okay, I'm sick of shoveling this stuff. <laughs> new Year's my... is just beginning the process for you guys still. Like It is. I mean, we'll get snow through first part of March usually. You know, mm -hmm. and then it'll start melting. So my drill is 40 feet and I shovel it once and I am done. Yeah. That's it. We, yeah, we, get, about, we get about three to five like accumulations every year, but like yeah, yeah. my driveway faces north. So if I'm not out there immediately clearing it, it's going to be there for like mm -hmm. the snow on the street is always still in my yard at the end uh -huh. of the season. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> The south, the the north side of the street, they're they're all they've been clear for months, but they'll still be snow in our yard, which is hilarious. To me. Yeah, we got, we got an inch of snow Sunday into Monday, and I had the Lexus parked up against the garage, and I've been driving this Kia, and I went to drive the Lexus today, and it still had a full thing of snow on it. <laughs> yes, like, did it? Yeah. So, and now of course it's uh, that crazy front that was moving through the country and dumped like eighteen inches of snow in yeah. North Connecticut. Mm -hmm. I'm supposed to get an inch of rain. Yeah, I, was like, really? I got I got a crap ton of rain earlier this week. I figured yeah. that was headed to you. <laughs> it is, it, and I'm I'm in a room right now that is uh, it's about a 270 degrees of windows, and it is pouring outside. But it is what? also mm -hmm. it's it's 40 degrees and yeah. raining. So you're good. You know, oh. Glorious. Still go out for recess in that. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> they don't do yeah. that. They don't do that. <laughs> Take your word for it. I'm not taking my six month old out for no. recess. My, my kids' schools that. when it's raining, they're like, mm, hard pass. Yeah.
You can always tell yeah. the days like just after it rains because they're limited on where they can go outside. They're like, it's an only blacktop day. Like, oh, yes. yeah. <laughs> yes. Yes. We, we don't want to send you home and get phone calls about why is my kid drenched? <laughs> Actually, they don't care. No, nah, they probably give a fuck. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> nah, I, I don't blame them. I don't know. They're not good. Playing in the mud is fun. <laughs> this is an off road show. We're supposed to endorse playing in the mud. That's right. That's the fun part, right? Yeah. Playing in the mud. I, I have yep. a little girl who has a set of shoes that she switches into nice. for recess and then she switches <laughs> back to her outfit. So she's uh, well prepared. Uh, and right? well, and to her credit, does a good job of not coming home with stuff ruined. So I'll I'll give her good a little for props her. for the four and a half year old. More than shoes. I can say for myself. <laughs> I have three boys that have ruined every pair of shoes. So <laughs> I guess. It's a fun juxtaposition. Uh, the three boys are ruining everything, and this little girl that's keeping. Well, she's learned. She's she's got three examples to learn from. And that and little girls are different. So they, mm, that's true. She colors in the lines better than multiple brothers at four and a half. I and, I, and I'm not talking about them at the same age. I'm talking about currently. <laughs> the eight I mean, and twelve year old do yeah. not give a crap, and her stuff is precise. <laughs> So kids are different partner. right there between boys and girls, huh? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, seriously. Well, sweet. We have definitely gotten close to our, our time for the end of the episode. Um, typically, we allow you to plug something, but I, I feel like CBI, I mean, we didn't even talk about Prinsu. That's true. We didn't. <laughs> you want to go quick through Prinsu? Prinsu is just, I mean, just, you know, really Prinsu is, is all about the the functionality of carrying your gear for whatever you're doing. That's really yes. what Prince is about. Um, you know, it's the first low profile modular all aluminum roof rack. A um, lot of awesome things coming this next year with Prince. I can, I can share, there's going to be some brand new products, never before seen products. And I'm not just talking like accessory type things, hmm. but um, totally brand new products coming on the Prince line. And, um, that's exciting. Same thing, you know, Prince is built right here in house as well. You know, it's part of the CBI family. No shit. Huh. Yeah. That's, yeah, awesome. that's, that's how cool. I found CBI was I found a Prince mm. rack for an 80 series that I had. Oh, nice. And just nice. never got to the point of being able to pull the trigger on it. I, I <laughs> took the factory rack off and just never never got to that next step but Dude, oh, i love those things printer racks are the absolute sweetheart of the forerunner world like that's no secret i'm not breaking around yeah. and saying that but it is like the go-to so if you need a suburban to test fit a prince rack too <laughs> hey there you go man i will we try need to figure that out for you don't we yeah. the biggest prince rack there yet. <laughs> there are not a lot of options for suburbans no, there's not. And, you know, surprisingly, I mean, we do get that question on occasion. I mean, yeah. there's there's a select group of people out there building those Suburbans and and it's a great vehicle to use, you know, when you got a family and you need to get around and and go have some adventures. Nothing wrong with it. And your wife won't let you buy a minivan. <laughs> that too. That too. Did you make lift kits for Toyota Sienna's to let the record show? That's a mini. I've seen some of those built out Sienna's. There's there's a few online Fucking that are rad. pretty impressive. Yeah. I mean, you don't want to go crawling with it, but like no. It's it's they're kind of cool. I, I Not have no bad. I mean them and lifted pre eye. Not pre eye. Like, it's pre eye. Pre, it's pre eye. Yeah. Also, also kind of cool. No shame. Yeah. Yeah. Holy crap. Yep. I found some wild Sienna's. <laughs> there's i mean there's that one like there's like, the concept the black one on yeah yeah the black that's, not, yeah, that's, one that's no more a sienna than this is not that is. though that thing's ready to go <laughs> that looks that's like that. some of these subarus that you see out there you know that these guys are building and they'll put a, a pretty wild bumper front and rear on it and lift it and We've got mm -hmm. some Subaru customers running Prince racks and it's, it's nuts what they're doing with those cars. Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, the difference is that Sienna looks like somebody went, honey, I'm just going to take the wagon into the woods this weekend. And that, that weekend in the woods was the gambler 500. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> this is the concept from Toyota that they built. A yeah, that, was, 
God, those wheels need to be burned at stake. Holy and I'm God. pretty sure the sliding door opens like a falcon door. Like a oh, it does. Door. I think it's a. Horrible. It lifts. I'll try and find one with the window. Look at that, door that rear trailing arm, though. Good God, that goes from like halfway up the van to the back axle. I don't know if you saw that, but that's the first time I've noticed it. Oh, it's it not, doesn't. It doesn't it's open not good. up, but it doesn't slide. What does it's it a, do then? A it, suicide it, door. It looks like it just moves directly out. <laughs> like it looks. Oh. Uh, what mm. the fuck? That's weird, right? Oh yeah, it's it's, it's it a, just moves out on an arm, basically. <laughs> that'd be a pain to get in and out of that thing. Yeah. yeah. The glory of concepts, not actually for real use. Yeah, not functional. <laughs> yeah. Thanks, it's a SEMA bill, right? It's oh, yeah. SEMA ready. <laughs> SEMA ready. That's a good way to put it. Yep. Just uh, has to look cool. It doesn't actually have to do anything. Yeah. That's what I was talking time. about at SEMA. You know, you get you get these awesome vehicles and they have wheels and tires that you can't even hardly turn the wheel without them, you know, hitting mm -hmm. the the fenders or whatever. I mean, they're just totally not even drivable. Yeah. Like, how did you right. get it in the building? Yeah. They were doing well, the, uh, you, the Austin Powers U-turn thing. Well, you <laughs> see that. I mean, if I don't know if you guys have been there during your setup, but you see stuff like that all over, or you see them drive in on wheels that they don't display. Mm -hmm. Oh, they, they switch them out. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Yeah. I've been, I've been to SEMA before. I've never been there on a setup day. Yeah, setup day is kind of interesting to see how some of that stuff comes to be. You know, yeah, yep. it's interesting. I did a lot of miles at a SEMA. I was, they were like, "Hey, you want to go back?" And I was like, "I, I think I'm good." Like, other than to see people, like, I'm okay. I want to walk ten miles in one day. I can do it not in Vegas. More, right? More. Ten, ten is a low day. Ten, Jeez. ten is a low day. I, I thought think most I, people do like six. I think my highest day was like 14 miles. Yeah, fuck that. <laughs> For that yeah, reason, I don't walk that much anymore at SEMA. I, <laughs> I am very specific now <laughs> exactly. with where I go. I don't do yeah. any extra walking. <laughs> nice. Right on by me. Yeah. The That's wheel and tire hall was very interesting. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you see the song change and people come back to life. And I was like, oh, God, this is sad. Mm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, sweet. Yikes. Uh, I'm going to wrap up the show. Um, you can rate, review the show uh, anywhere you listen to podcasts. You can like and subscribe on YouTube. CBI's got a YouTube channel as well. Um, you right. can follow CBI Offroad and Prince U. It's, off, it's at CBI Offroad on Instagram. It's at CBI Offroad Fab on Facebook. And it's uh, CBI Offroad Fab on YouTube as well. And then it's Prince U Racks on Instagram. I didn't dig yep. deeper on Prince U. <laughs> it the, all the rest are the same for Prince Sue. So all the social, you know, nice. YouTube, all nice. that's all the same. Yeah. That's, I freaking love those racks. Got it. Um yeah. you can follow Hooniverse, the Hooniverse on Twitter, the real Hooniverse on Instagram. And Ross is no not like the one from Friends still. He hasn't changed it. He's not <laughs> going to. Because taking point, suggestions. I have it memorized, Ross. Please don't change it. I know it. Well, I'm open to suggestions. <laughs> After 143 episodes, I think I got it. And that might be the wrong number. <laughs> Uh, and I'm at Overlanding Dad, and that's it. We've done a show. Thank you so much. Yeah. Thanks, Nathan. That was awesome, guys. Appreciate it. Sure, sure was awesome to hang out for the last little bit and talk about some fun stuff.